Hello, today I'm going to say something about longbows. Um, in my previous videos about bows, I didn't actually have a bow to show you, but now I do because I've got myself a longbow. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this longbow is that it is long. It's taller than I am, and I'm quite tall. Well, actually, I had this one made for me, and a longbow is taller than its user. And that's sort of a definition of a long bow. There isn't really a brilliantly good definition of a long bow. Um, I've looked in various dictionaries and encyclopedias for one, and they tend to see, say things like, uh, oh, it's the sort of bow that was used by the English against the French in the Hundred Years' War and so forth. Well, that's not really a definition of a bow, is it? Um, by and large, it's a piece of wood that's taller than its user, and perhaps there is uh, an implication that it's used for war as opposed to for hunting or other things, but you could use a longbow for hunting. Um, now, one thing that distinguishes the longbow from shorter bows is that people say that they take a lot more skill to use. I'm not completely convinced of this. Um, I think people are confusing two things. A very powerful war bow uh, that of this type would be a longbow um, took an awful lot of strength to pull. And so you needed an awful lot of training to get the strength to pull it, to twang it. Um, but actually, in terms of the skill of holding yourself properly, getting into the right position and looking down the sights and judging distances and all those sort of things, I think those are pretty much the same for other bows as well, really. So I'm not completely convinced that longbows really take any more skill to use. Um, this one is made of ash. Um, you probably know that a lot of them are made out of yew, that's quite a famous fact, and it's true, a lot of them were made out of yew, but ash is a perfectly authentic uh, and very good wood to make a bow out of, and uh, one of the reasons I have an ash bow and not a yew bow is that yew is now flipping expensive. Uh, apparently it's much more lucrative to sell yew trees now for manufacturers of medicines rather than to bowyers, uh, which is a shame for people who like archery. Um, so, it has a string. Um, Strings were made out of various things, but linen was pretty common, although it's very difficult to get the right sort of linen these days. Um, and like this one, very thoroughly coated in beeswax to make it more resistant to moisture and make it a little bit uh, stiffer and more manageable. Um, now, first time I tried to string this, I had a bit of trouble um, because what I was used to with shorter bows, um, and I've seen, I, honestly, I've seen some videos on uh, YouTube and elsewhere on, on the net people talking about longbows, and the, the bows come up to here and they're quite clearly a flat modern recurve thing. They're not longbows, this is a longbow, they're long. Um, I find it quite difficult to, to string because what I was used to doing is just sticking the bottom end into my instep, holding the string at the top, pushing down into the belly of the bow and then pulling the string up. But when, the, when the, it's above you, the bow this long, that's really awkward. But uh, there are solutions to this. Uh, one being, can you see that this has actually got uh, let's try and get it in focus. There we go. It's got two knocks at the end. And those outer knocks are for a bow stringer, uh, which I, I made one myself. It's pretty easy, really. It was just a long piece of cord with a loop in each end. You put the loops into those outer knocks, and then you hold the bow this way up. You stand on the bow stringer and pull the bow up, and that bends the bow, and then you can put the string on quite easily. And uh, that was the solution to the problem. If you strung it correctly, this distance here, between where you put the arrow and the string, should be about a fist and a thumb. This is one of the possible origins for the expression, the rule of thumb, but there are others. Um, if you want to adjust this distance, you can, of course, take the string off, untie the loop, retie it and so forth. But actually, I've never found that necessary because all I need to do is um, take a string off and just put a few twists in it and just the act of twisting it makes a remarkable difference in the length of the string, put it back on and uh, that's how I can get this distance to be correct. Now, something you don't see in the movies is archers doing this before a battle. I'm warming the bow up. You would do this to get best performance out of your bow. Um, if you just shoot from cold, uh, the performance of the bow doesn't uh, doesn't last so well. Apparently the, the velocity of the arrows drops off very quickly after a few shots if you go straight to cold. So archers will be doing this before a battle as they get ready. Uh, you notice I'm wearing a glove on my left hand. Um, archers would have something on this hand probably, uh, although I suppose an alternative to having something to protect this hand would be having lots of scars on this hand because when you get an arrow in your bow and you're using a longbow, it just rests on top of your hand. 
and so this arrow with its fletchings skims across the top of your hand very very fast over and over again and you can get horrible cuts uh, particularly if these are the goose feather quills um, if a little bit of the quill is just showing there it's like a bit of sharp fingernail if that goes whoosh, across the top of your hand you certainly know about it there'll be you know, blood and all sorts so something to protect your left hand now when I did archery in my teens I never ever slapped myself on the inside of my uh, wrist and I was quite contemptuous of the sort of people who wore wrist protectors ha archers braces or whatever you want to call them pansies so I thought um, but the first time I used this longbow I hit myself quite painfully on the inside of the wrist so uh, I've been wearing various uh, arm guards uh, since and for my right hand I've just made myself this pretty simple thing just a piece of leather um, there are other things you can do to protect your right hand um, but you're pulling back on this string with a lot of force and if you do that over and over and over again you will just skin your fingers so uh, that's how that is used pretty straightforward um, you notice it's got a little slot in the middle of it for where the arrow goes which is useful when you're shooting outdoors very long distances twang over a great long way but in fact indoors uh, the arrow goes there on the string and I hold the string quite a bit lower down because at short distances um, that's what you've got to do um, other things I can say about the bow while I've got it here um, yes ways that you can uh, use the bow um, <laughs> and ways that you can see that someone in a Hollywood film is not using the bow correctly um, one thing is that in order to draw the bow back I need to use quite a bit of muscle power and if I want to aim the bow off oh there's an enemy up there I want to shoot up that way I don't just move my arm if you move your arm like that your, your whole body is not braced properly my arm there is much much weaker than it is there so instead I will aim my whole body up that way really you aim from the hips so when you're, when you're at full draw you then move your whole self not just your arm um, and something that's really cool to do if you're in a Hollywood movie maybe you're an elf or something is uh, for, I don't know, because it looks cool I don't know why would you do this anyway is you hold the bow sideways like this and you go twang like that uh, well if I hold this if I hold the bow the right way up I can look down the arrow and can see accurately where I'm aiming if I'm pulling it down here I can't do that so you have far lower accuracy also if I pull it towards me my body gets in the way pretty quickly so I can't pull the bow back to full draw so you get a low power inaccurate shot this way but if you want to look cool apparently that's what you have to put up with uh, there is one alternative uh, for you could draw it to full draw out at this sort of angle um, but then if anyone does that you know they're not using a full poundage bow because only with a very low poundage bow would you be strong enough to pull at that sort of angle you need to pull into your body if you want to have any oomph right that's probably enough for one video don't you think <laughs>